Hi guys, I know a lot of you are coming to the point in the year where you're um, either sitting or preparing um, for the entrance exam. So these are the UK CAT and the BMAT and I just wanted to share with you my experiences with them, how I prepared and um, I've sat to them more than once because I applied to medicine as a graduate after failing to get in the first time. So I can, I'm going to tell you a bit about um, what I did differently and how my score was better the second time round. So the UK CAT is, you probably all know, it's made up of four sections and it's done online. And when I mean online, I mean everything's done online. So even the maths bit, the calculator's online and it's really annoying because you can't get hands on and, you know, do all the calculations. You have to just click loads of buttons and it's really tedious. Um, and it's made up of four sections, as you know, and um, so the way I, so when I first sat the UK CAT, this was in 2008, the UK CAT was only around for a couple of years and I wasn't really aware of it and so when I found out about it, I just went to WH Smith's and I brought a book, revised a little bit and then didn't think much of it, thinking I'll be okay and then went in and I got a really bad score. <laughs> so... The UK CAT is one of those exams where you can't prepare for it and sometimes over preparing uh, ends up being worse but you need to familiarise yourself with the format and the more you do that you'll waste, you'll waste less time in the exam just getting on with the questions and doing them. So how I did it the second time round, I got the book, but I got a book with, um, so I'll link it down below. I got a book with I think like four or five or six hundred questions so they had loads of examples so they had loads that I could go through um, so I went through that so I went through them in sections I timed myself as though I was actually doing it um, I looked at the answers and there's generally a pattern that you can follow there's generally something you can just grab and it just helps you as you're doing the next questions um, with that though if you do finish all the questions don't do it again in like you know tomorrow and then again two days later you need to give yourself time to forget the questions so when you reattempt them they're kind of like new questions um i'll be a bit cautious with books though because it's an author's interpretation of what the exam is going to be like um so even though the questions are quite close you can't really trust the answers 100 percent. obviously for example the maths you know the answer is the same but for example, um, the section where there's like symbols and you have to um, the you have to give an answer as to what is the next pattern of symbols that come up, or there's um, symbols with a key. You know what what sentence does this mean and stuff like that. So the best resource really is the actual official UK CAT questions, and I know that there isn't many of them. So when you do it, there's it's actually not that useful. But if you use that as a guide to how books should be and if they match and if the questions are really easy or really hard or just don't really make sense, then you know that the book you've got um, isn't great. So that's how I went about it. I went through the book, I think, two, three times overall. I went through the questions two times. And it's such a bad test. It doesn't test anything, in my opinion. Having gone through med school and now being a junior doctor, it is not a predictor in any way of any of your abilities. So it's great if you've done well and you can um, secure many more interviews, but if you don't do well, it really doesn't mean anything. So my advice would be, if you are going to sit the UK CAT, make sure that all of your medical school choices aren't UK CAT based. So make sure that there are some in there that have the BMAT, if you are able to sit that, or there are a few um, medical schools that um, don't want any entrance exams, so they're a bit more competitive to get into because everyone's thinking exactly how you're thinking and they apply as well. But, you know, just open up your choices so you don't do um, kind of just all UK cats. So in case it flops, uh, you're not le left with kind of nothing, which is kind of what happened to me when I first applied. Um, just a little bit about courses. I never went to them. Um, if you can afford them why not but i don't think they're going to give you anything different that you won't be able to learn yourself at home using books and you know going over the questions again it's a person's interpretation of the exam and you know nobody has the exam questions and the answers so they formulate questions and come up with answers so 
you know sometimes they put you in a thought process where it's wrong and so I'd be a bit cautious with them but if you want to go you can go but I just never went and it was fine um, so secondly the B mat so this one is a bit more predictable and um, you can actually revise for it so the way I went about it was I got my old GCSE books I think or my old A level books so I revised things like chemistry and physics from there you know some of the equations and some of just the basic concepts that I just needed to relearn and the way I kind of um, did that was again look at the BMAT questions that they have on the official website and just look at the type of questions that they go through and the areas the subjects um, there are going to be a few questions which you have no clue whatsoever but that's normal and that's fine so don't get scared by them and you might not even have a question like that in the actual exam so don't worry but prepare yourself well so for me applying to UCL the main turning point was the written part of the exam so to secure an interview I had to get a certain uh, score in that section and when I first um, sat the exam I didn't really pay attention to that I thought you know wow I can write an essay this is just like GCSE level and I don't think uh, I got a good enough grade but it was just under the mark that they wanted so the way I did it the second time round was um, I brought a BMAP book and I'll link that down below as well and in this one it had um, loads and loads and loads of examples of the types of essay questions because when you look back into the BMAT there's certain subject areas that they always touch into and you can pick a f pick one so in the exam you have to pick one and then write on it so this book had loads and loads of examples and um, it would give you an example essay and you would just read that and it was so simple there was you know the words were simple the grammar was simple but that's not you know that's not what they focused on they focused on the structure you know introduction argument f um for like for for the argument argument against and then like a conclusion and when i look back at my essay now you know it's so basic but that's what they want they want you to be concise they want you to have a structure and they want it to be you know get to the point don't faff because you've only got one page to fill out um, and you can't write anymore um so yeah i went through that and what i did was um i practiced with friends so one of my other friends was also applying to med school and she was doing the BMAT and then we'll just exchange the essays and give each other feedback based on the kind of imaginary mark scheme that we had set out from this book and we'd give each other advice so when it came to the exam and I looked at questions I was like I don't know what I can if I can write a page on this but once you get into it and you get into the structure of intro for against conclusion you you've like okay it's finished it's done and it's not that hard um, and if you are applying to a university that apply, um, accepts the BMAT then so with UCL what they did is they had a photocopy of ex like my exam sheet of the written component and they used that in an interview to kind of you know strike a conversation and um, ask me about my views on the things I'd written in there and just generally see what kind of a person you are so make sure that whatever you write in there you actually believe and you're not writing it just for the sake of the essay because it might come up later and you might have to defend what you've written if you get an interview. Um, so the UK CAT, so I just want to go back, the UK CAT is sat um, in an exam centre where people are doing their theory tests. So you walk in, it's a bit noisy and it's a bit off-putting seeing people doing things like theory tests and then you, you feel like you're there doing like a really important life-changing exam for your UK cat um, so get yourself used to the fact that that's what the exam environment will be like and you might get distracted but just focus and don't panic so what I did first time around is I literally in the middle of an exam I got into a panic and I wasted time over simple maths questions and simple things and when I so you then leave and then go to the reception and they give you a printout of your marks right there and then and when I, as soon as I got the results, I was like, oh, crap, like, that's just went really badly. And I'm not going to get into medicine this year because I think three out of the four med schools I applied was for the UK CAT. Um, so, yeah, but the BMAT is a bit more predictable. Everyone sits at the same time. It's in an exam centre. Mine was in a university, for example, and you sit with everyone you do it and you leave. I mean, it's something you can actually prepare for a little bit. But again, don't get bogged down like... Um, nothing is life-changing you know you, you'll be fine and doing badly in these entrance exams doesn't mean you won't get into medical school and even if you do get into med school it doesn't mean you'll be a bad doctor honestly it has no say whatsoever in the type of doctor you'll be 
So it's just see it as an obstacle, prepare for it, get used to it, try to stay calm and yeah, go through it and smash it. So that's all I have to say really. Good luck if you're going through it. I went through it three times and I crap my pants every time but it was all right in the end and you get through it so good luck